Hello, this is Denise Smith from the Niagara County Extension Office. And as you can see, we're not in our normal location today. Um, we're at a remote location, my kitchen at home, because we have no power at our um, office today due to a construction project that is going on there. So we moved home and are gonna share our tips and tricks to get the best out of your cooking appliances from, from my microwave and my stove. So um, we're gonna first start talking about a microwave oven. And it wasn't long ago um, in the scheme of things that microwaves were considered a luxury and not every family had one. But in today's day, everybody has a microwave oven. So um, we just need to, know that they can be used for more than thawing a pound of hamburger or reheating um, your lunch. So we're gonna give you some tips and tricks to, to use your microwave to its um, best advantage. Um, some benefits of having a microwave oven and using it is it doesn't heat up your kitchen, kitchen especially during the hot summer months. Um, it's much faster than cooking on a conventional stove. It retains your food's nutrients better because of the cooking time being shorter. And it's just a really quick and um, easy alternative to more conventional type cooking methods. So some, some tips to remember is microwaves really don't heat your food traditionally. What they do is it makes the water, sugar, and fat molecules in your food vibrate, which creates the heat. So you want to start with your foods either at refrigerator or room temperature, not at the frozen state, because that takes so much longer. Um, you need to remember you need to stir your food during the cooking time or um, if it's in a package, you may actually need to turn that package over. Most microwaves this day and age um, do have a carousel, and so they are rotating constantly, which helps with the um, even cooking of that food. Always try to use a circular dish or arrange your food particle or food pieces in a circular pattern because microwaves do better um, in a circular pattern rather than in a square or oblong pattern. If you're going to double your recipe, you do need to remember you need to increase the time, usually by a half. So um, moist and dense foods take much longer to cook. Higher fat or sugar foods take a lot less time to cook. Anything that might have a skin or a membrane like a baked potato or if you're cooking not an egg in its shell, but um, just like an egg where you haven't broken the yolk, always pierce that yolk or pierce the skin of the potato, else you will have an explosion in your microwave and a huge mess to clean up. Um, the other thing, it's always best to cover your food while you're microwaving not only to avoid having a mess to clean up, but it also helps keep that moisture in your food while you're microwaving. The one advantage to a microwave is they have glass doors so you can watch your food cooking. And if you think it's getting a little too done, you can immediately open the door, which stops the cooking. Always be sure to use pot holders when removing a dish from the microwave because the dish can be hot just from the heat of the food heating the dish up. And you need to remember meat will not brown in a microwave. Um, if you cooked it long enough, it probably would, but it's also kind of like shoe leather then. So if you want browned meat, like brown chicken, whatever, you need to use stuff like Worcestershire sauce, soy sauce, something with a brown color so that your meat um, isn't so pale. All kinds of foods can be cooked in a microwave. Um, 
you can convert your regular recipes into microwave cooking. Um, you just need to know that you're going to need to reduce the time, say, of a casserole in the oven that would cook for 30 minutes. Reduce that time by about a fourth to a third. Um, you also want to reduce the liquid in your recipes by about a fourth because you're cooking so much less, the um, moisture does not have time to evaporate like it would if it was on the stovetop or in the oven. And use slightly less seasoning because um, you don't have time to develop those seasoning flavors when it's cooking in a microwave and a little goes a long ways. Raw pasta rice and um, dried beans need to be cooked first before putting them in the microwave. Um, they will never cook in a microwave if you just put in raw pasta or you know raw pasta and beans and rice. Um, crispy foods like French fries, onion rings, um, tater tots, fish sticks, those kind of things will not ever be crispy in the microwave. They're always going to be um, more moist and never crisp up like we like them. So most recipes are written for microwaves that are 600 to 800 watts. So know the wattage of your um, microwave. If it's less than 600, you're going to have to add 15 seconds for each minute of cooking. And if it's over 800 watts, which a lot of the bigger ones now are 1,000 to 1,200 watts, um, decrease your time by 15 seconds for each minute. So your wattage will be in your instruction book. Hopefully you kept that when you unpacked your microwave. Or if you don't have it, you can go online and look at the model and find your instruction book. So some safety features, when microwaves first came out, people were very afraid of the radiation that um, a microwave may emit. A microwave is a non-ionizing radiation, so it's different than like x-rays. And now there are so many safety features on a microwave that you really um, should not worry unless your microwave has been damaged in some way. And if you are not using it properly, then you could worry. So always read and follow your owner's manual. And if it operates with the door open, if the fan comes on or the turntable um, that is not functioning properly, you need to get rid of that. Also, microwaves are very safe if they are, um, haven't been damaged, if the seal is good, if the door closes tight, those kind of things. And if you do have a pacemaker and everything is working properly, you should be fine to use your microwave. Most injuries that happen from a microwave oven are heat related. Either you grab hold of that um, hot a utensil or, or hot container and get burned or something spills on you. So um, rarely is there a radiation issue. So never use your microwave when it is empty. Do not turn it on. That can um, really damage the Megatron tube that produces the microwave. So Always use microwave safe containers, that is glass, um, plastic containers that are rated for microwaves or, or ceramic. Um, do not use old margarine containers, cool whip containers, those kind of things. They were not designed to be put in the microwave and they could um, emit some kind of toxic um, fumes or gases into your foods. Another big issue is microwaves can cause a thing called superheated water. So if you like to heat up your water for coffee or hot tea in the microwave, um, be sure to put in your um, a little bit of coffee or something in the water or a tea bag or something so it will not um, superheat. Superheated water is water that has gone beyond the boiling point of water yet shows no signs of boiling. 
So if you even put a plastic spoon in your water, something to break that surface tension of the water, um, then it won't do that. Oftentimes, if you do get superheated water and you touch that cup, it, it will just erupt like a volcano and that's where many of the burns come. Um, every microwave cooks a little differently. Um, I'm used to mine at home. I go to work in town. We live out in the country, so our electricity isn't quite as strong as town electricity. So it takes a little longer. So I go into town and I turn the microwave on, which there we get really good electricity. And I'm always overcooking something. So just learn the ins and outs of your microwave oven. And um, that just comes from knowing your instruction book and following the instructions and lots and lots of practice. So with that, we will kind of talk about cooking on a stovetop or an oven. Um, with a stovetop and oven, just like your microwave, every stove and every oven cooks and bakes differently. So you need to learn the ins and outs of your stove and your cooktop to get consistent um, results every time you do cook. So again, your instruction manual is the key. I'll learn about whether your stove is gas, electric, smooth top, burners, um, induction, whatever it is, you need to learn about how to use that stove properly. You also need to learn how to clean it. And again, the same with your stove top, your oven, and your microwave. They all work much better if they are clean. So know how to clean them properly and keep them clean. <coughs> Excuse me. And know how to maintain them. Because some things are easy if you have a stove with burners and a burner burns out, you can um, easily swap that out. Again, if you don't have your owner's manual, you can go online and get that manual and um, learn some specifics about your stove. So when cooking in the oven, always um, use the preheat and preheat to the proper temperature before you put your dish in to cook. Then make sure you use your timer that's usually included with your oven or use your phone or whatever timer you have so that you know that it is cooking properly and to the right amount of time. Another thing to maybe get is an oven thermometer so you know that your oven is reaching the proper temperature that you have set it to. And if it isn't, you may need to have a repairman come or if some models you can actually do some adjusting if you have your owner's manual. Um, while cooking, avoid opening your oven door so that you don't let the heat out because you want that um, oven cavity to remain at a constant um, temperature. Also, usually not at a regular meal, but at a holiday meal, we try to stuff everything into the oven so it's all done at one time. You need to remember you need to leave two inches around every cooking um, container in your oven to allow for proper air circulation so everything um, gets, gets done on time. And also be sure to put your racks in the pop proper location. If you're baking, the rack should be in the middle location in your oven. If you're broiling, you should be using the top rack. If you're using like to bake a turkey, roast a turkey, use the bottom rack. So get to know your racks and their rack location. So on the stove top, you usually have two large burners, two small burners. So be sure to use the proper burner size for the size of um, kettle or skillet that you're using. Otherwise, if you're using a big kettle on a little burner, you're not going to get um, really good heating. And if you're using a little kettle on a giant burner, 
you're wasting all that energy that's going up around your kettle and it's a good way to get burned. So the other thing to remember is always use proper um, whatever proper cookware for your cooktop that your instruction manual says to use. So that will um, help prolong the life of your stove and um, give you better cooking results. So with that, kind of the takeaway is you need to practice, 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 and um, get so you know the ins and outs of your cooking appliances so you get the best results possible every time you cook a meal. So with that, we'll sign off for today and um, we'll probably be seeing you in the future. <laughs>